everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, you might notice right off the bat that this is not a Q&A video as it was supposed to be and as I promised it would be delivered to you over the weekend a couple of days ago. To kind of get past the bad news as quickly as possible, uh, I will just let you guys know that I have been dealing with some additional health issues aside from my fibromyalgia that I typically have to juggle with my job. I ended up needing to go to the ER last week on Thursday um, due to some very severe abdominal pain that I was having and uh, I won't get into the details just since it's kind of personal but uh, there's been a lot of emotions a lot of physical pain and recovery over this past week so obviously the video is delayed I know that's okay with you guys I know how supportive you all are but I just wanted to kind of explain why I've been gone after promising that I would get back to work. Over the last couple of days, it's been weighing pretty heavily on my mind that I might have to have surgery, and uh, after this morning and talking to my doctor again, it looks like maybe that won't be the case. Let's all cross our fingers, and if you can send your well wishes, I would very much appreciate them. Um, but to make things a little bit more complicated, the reason why the timing of it was so poor is that my little sister is getting married this weekend, so I'm really excited to be able to go down and spend time with her, and I just hope that my body can hold up to the trip. All of that being said, between the trip to the ER and recovery and the wedding, I obviously wasn't able to work on the Q&A, but I am so excited when I finally do get the chance to answer some of your questions. I've looked over all of them and they look really fun and I'm really excited to do that. But for this week, all I could manage was getting another sketchbook page out to you, which you guys seem to like, so I'm really excited to be able to share another spread. This is one I have been waiting to paint actually for probably close to two weeks now. I sketched this when I was in Puerto Vallarta during my vacation at the beginning of July and these were some of the iguanas that we saw while we were there. I left the sketch so that I could go ahead and film the coloring of it when I got back which I was going to do like right away and then you know well we already talked about that but I finally got to sit down and paint this sketch and so I thought I would share it with you guys. So it was really cool seeing the iguanas in Puerto Vallarta. I didn't know that there would be so many of them. They are actually an endangered species um, declared by a lot of the countries in Central America, I suppose. Um, and I double checked and looked at the information when I got back here to the States because I was really surprised. I've never heard an iguana being referred to as an endangered species. And I know that a lot of people keep them as pets. I think that either we had one or a family friend had one when I was super, super teeny tiny. So I don't remember all the details on that. I just know that they've always been kind of in my mind. It's just like a lizard that people have. But unfortunately, because of that pet trade and because people were taking them out of the wild to become pets, as well as people hunting them for food, apparently they taste like chicken. Uh, the nickname is the chickens of the trees. Uh, these animals have declined a lot in recent years. And in most of the places that we went that were in a more natural setting, they had signs that were uh, stating like, don't feed the iguanas. This is an endangered species. Please don't harass or touch them, which I thought was really neat. I actually saw one on our first full day there when I was walking back from a meal, which was really cool. It was on the property that we were staying on, the hotel ground, and he kind of ran off really fast and it was... I could tell he was big, but he was still a younger iguana. These guys can reach like six feet when they get to be adults, including their tail, so they're pretty sizable animals. Where we got to see more of them was when we went snorkeling on one of the days. We went down to one of the marinas, and the marina was actually on a little piece of land called Isla Iguana, and there were signs all over the place uh, that were stating, you know, endangered species, don't feed, don't touch, but I don't think there were many in the morning. I don't remember seeing any. I remember seeing frigate birds, which I was really excited to see because I had never seen a frigate bird in person. But it's when we got back from our snorkeling adventure that we saw the iguanas because they were everywhere. They apparently are protected on this piece of land and they come out when the day gets warmer because they heat themselves on the concrete uh, that are the roads and the sidewalks and things like that. So we probably saw several dozen iguanas all ranging from juveniles to these really big big iguanas i mean it was so cool to see them even though they're called green iguanas as a species the adults actually get kind of this orange coloration which was really pretty and i was really excited to paint that in this sketch 
So this sketchbook page features three little sketches. One of them that I'm spending the majority of this video on is that big old, I assume male, I don't know, that could be a wrong assumption, but this big old iguana that you could tell has lived uh, quite, quite a many years and he had all this uh, coloration and he had these sp crazy spines sticking off of his back and some of them were like broken and things like that. So he's, he's seen a couple things. The more common ones are the ones that are seen on the right side of this little sketch. It's much smaller, but it shows more of the yellow green coloration and before they kind of get that really big jaw structure and those extra folds and those extra spines. I did do a third sketch on this page in the lower right hand corner, which you'll see at the end of this video. However, I didn't include the footage of that because this whole second half of the video I had to film with my overhead camera instead of I've been trying to film with my phone uh, for some of the closer up shots that you saw earlier in this video because it just has a really nice clarity to it and I've just been playing around with that. But the overhead camera, for whatever reason, it normally underexposes everything, but in this case it overexposed everything. So I tried to salvage the footage of the second iguana portrait and I think I did an okay job. Hopefully it's not too painful to watch, but I thought I would spare you uh, the eye there. So I'll just show you a still at the end of this video. I know that I have several viewers from Central and South America, so I would love to hear from all of you guys if you are used to seeing these animals out and about, if there are other species that are really common that maybe the people here in the US and in Europe are not familiar with. I'd love to hear your stories. Regardless of where you're from, I'd love to know what your favorite animal is. It might not have been conveyed well here on the channel, but I do have a serious love for reptiles. I tend to like the animals that are a little more misunderstood and need a little extra help if that wasn't already clear from last week's opossum video. So let me know in the comments below which your favorite reptile is. So I want to let you guys watch the rest of this second iguana come to life here for just a few short moments, but then make sure you stick around at the end of this video. I have a really important announcement for you guys. Before you guys go today, I did want to go ahead and share this World Watercolor Month limited edition pouch with you guys. I mentioned it in my World Watercolor Month video, but I didn't have actual footage of it to show you, so I wanted to go ahead and show it off if you haven't already picked one up or haven't heard what this is over on Doodle Wash, who is the founder of World Watercolor Month. They have a World Watercolor Month shop where the artist ambassadors, which I am one of, have their artwork on these uh, print to order bags with this limited edition overlay for World Watercolor Month and the sponsored by Doodle Wash. These are only going to be available, I believe, during the month of July. So if you want to go ahead and head over and get one, you are welcome to do so. And absolutely all of the proceeds from these pouches go towards the Dreaming Zebra Foundation, which helps get art supplies and education into the hands of children. If you guys are interested in picking up some of my more uh, traditional canvas bags that I showed off in my travel video earlier this summer, uh, I do have more in stock now, including a lot of new designs. So I'm really excited. They turned out beautifully and I'm excited to get them into all of your hands. So if you wanted one last time around, but I was sold out, be sure to go ahead and check out those Etsy listings and 
Although the full proceeds from these pouches don't go to the Dreaming Zebra Foundation, as part of the artist ambassadors for the World Watercolor Month, $1 of every purchase, so every item purchased, will be donated at the end of the month by myself. And the rest of that money goes to help support both me as a working artist and this YouTube channel. So it's still going to a great place and it's one of the best ways that you can support me creating content here on YouTube. Since I will be traveling for the wedding, if you place an order today on the day this video launches, uh, there might be a one day delay in shipping them out. I think that's how that'll work on Etsy, but anything that you place this weekend, uh, today is July 19th, so anything you place in the next couple of days will absolutely ship out on Monday. So I will go ahead and get those out to you as soon as possible, and thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you to all of you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you'd like to see more content, it really helps out this channel and helps us to grow. And thanks as always to my patrons for supporting what I do here. Until next time, happy painting.